Hi everyone, here is a quick tutorial on the skinning using the interactive bind skin. So my other tutorials were basically showing the bind skin and the options and painting weights and all that good stuff. The good part about the interactive bind skin is that we're going to be able to kind of get different sections to be kind of weighted in a sense because you guys are going to be able to choose how far the the capsule will incorporate the vertices on the mesh and you guys will see how that works but we really can't get around painting weights completely unfortunately but this is a really good method to kind of work with and uh, minimize some of the painting weights if you choose to use this method again binding options are going to make a huge difference so i'm going to go up here to my window down to outliner there's my outliner with everything there i'll hold shift and click on the plus sign here and what I've done already, and this is on a previous tutorial that I sent to you guys, is that I've selected the joints in here. And let's see if it actually saved before I say that. Otherwise, I'm going to have to select them again. But I'll go to Select, down to Quick Selection Sets. Yeah, and I, I made a quick selection set for the joints that I'm going to be skinning the character to. And again, I wouldn't skin the character to any of the joints I did not want in there. It's just going to be more difficult to work with. And then you're going to get some unwanted movements. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this. That's going to select those. And uh, I didn't really combine the, the mesh. So what I could do is, you'll notice that the head is separate from the body. I could combine those, or I could add the head later. Uh, I could probably just work with the body for now, just because you're going to get the idea based off of that. And the blend shapes are really only based off of the head in, in this scenario. So this is not a full mesh, and you just always have to be careful where the head is going to line up with the seams here. And basically this one isn't lining up already. Uh, I'd have to move the geometry over and um, and get that going before I would, I would call this good for the most part. But when you're painting weights and stuff, when the joints are going to move, the vertices are, are what are being affected. So basically you want those vertices to be kind of stationary in a sense, but they're also going to follow a certain joint otherwise when a joint rotates or something you're going to get a type of pulling at the seams like if I were to select a vertex or a few vertices and move them like this you get the pulling at the seams and it pulls away okay so be wary of that again you can get it to work it just takes some TLC on the edges or where the seams are to what joint they're going to follow and some of the other joints that might try to pull them away. So you just got to be careful about that. So what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and do my quick selection set. So select, quick select set, joints for skinning. And you'll see that all of those are there. Not all of my joints are a part of this. Again, you're going to just decide which ones you want. Like in this case here, I wouldn't need these ones. So I know these are part of like a game setup if you were going to use joints to move the mouth and the other facial features and whatnot. You guys have to excuse me, that's my dog. But um, if you want the joints to move the face and whatnot, then you're going to have them kind of built like this. So you'll see that this setup here is very common for video games and whatnot. And it could be for movies and stuff as well. But you can have this incorporated with blend shapes and whatnot on top of it. So what I'll do is I'll just kind of work with these and the head joint. Where's the head joint? I can go ahead and move that one too. And the neck, because the neck's not really doing anything. So all the way up to the spine, which is going to be at this one right here. That's what I'm going to take the body and I'll shift select the body in my scene like that. And now I have only the joints that I want to use. So I'll go up to the top here and I'll make sure my I am in the rigging set, menu set here go to skin down to interactive bind skin option box okay when I click on the option box I've already changed the settings but I'll go to edit down to reset settings so that you see how the defaults are on here and instead of joint hierarchy this is going to select everything down the line I'm going to drop this down and tell it to do the binding to the selected joints that I've you know purposely selected and not everything in here because even if you selected your joints, if you have joint hierarchy on, then basically it's not going to care about your selection. It's going to select every joint all the way down, whatever um, you have selected, okay, hierarchy-wise. So selected joints is the way to go. 
the binding method is not the closest distance because that's a radius basically saying that the the fingers here you know these two these two joints right here might be closer than this joint to that joint right there okay so we don't want that um, basically I'm looking at the the root joint of the finger and the middle joint of the finger so like my index finger for instance those might be farther apart than the middle joint of the index finger and the middle joint of the middle finger okay so that can be a problem so instead of closest distance I'll drop this down and say closest in hierarchy so now it's going to pay attention to the joint chain on the finger and its child joints so each child joint to that one whatever one is actually connected so my included method I could tell it to be by minimum weight um, I'm not really too worried about this one closest in volume should work because they're all going to have something attached to them and you guys are going to see that we're going to get little capsules so the volume type is going to be capsule based you could tell it to be cylindrical I do like the capsule though because it does have a fall off so that's totally fine but we could do by a minimum weight um, I'll just leave it to closest volume or closest in volume I'll leave it to volume type as capsule and for the skinning method I'll drop this down instead of classic linear I'll go down to weight blended so hopefully it'll help me kind of blend them out again uh, you know sometimes it works good for a certain character as you guys bind a little bit more and, and work with rigging you're gonna get a little bit more used to what you're gonna be doing and a kind of workflow that, that works for you okay max influence is basically how many joints it needs or can max out at anywhere from three to three to seven is um, is something that I, I see as a common one three and five is, is more common than that even but uh, I like to try either three or five so I'm just gonna try three in this case if this doesn't work for me there's no harm done I could just unbind the skin and try this again so I'm gonna go ahead and bind the skin and my skin or the actual geometry turns a gray and what what happens here is that I'm going to go to my outliner here and close well minimize it I'll double click this tool over here to bring up my interactive bind tool and you're gonna to see this is the way that it works I can click on any joint like the shoulder joint here and I get the capsules here and these capsules I will work with to to show what their influence is and their influence is basically this for the shoulder and stuff you see my color coding here my color coding down here at the bottom is the red being the max influence kind of like when you're painting skin weights it's white on the side and black where the blue is but um, in this case it's it's red going on down to blue so the cooler the colors get or as they transition to a cooler color like blue blue has little to no influence and uh, you know green has some yellow is is mediocre but uh, the orange and the red are really going to drive the vertices in this section okay if I want to go to another section instead of coming up here to my influences and clicking on the joints here I can actually click off in my work area over here and click on another joint like down here for the the forearm roll okay so I could click off this body click on the wrist and see what the wrist is doing and all that good stuff so it's very easy to work with which is really nice and you're seeing that um, I think that I already have this on but it might be on by by uh, default if it's not you see that I have reflections on and this is really good for a not a skeleton well also a skeleton but a skeleton based off of a character that is symmetrical otherwise you're gonna have to um, go to the arm that is bigger like if you were doing Hellboy or something like that and the arm is really large on the you know the right arm I think is the one that he has large maybe the left arm I don't know Hellboy has one large arm and one small arm then you have to you know kind of change that up a little bit because the larger arm is going to be different than the smaller arm so painting weights and getting these two line up is going to be a little bit different so you could turn that on or off and it's going to be based off your selection okay if you have it off by default and you click on here and you click on something else if I turn it on sometimes it doesn't um, immediately turn on and in this case it looks like it did if it doesn't then a deselection and a reselection is just the necessary thing to do so not a big deal this one is modeled from the front so that's something worth mentioning here that the reflection mode is in X okay the X axis saying um, this guy on the the X axis of the positive side is going to reflect to the X axis on the negative side 
So I'll take this and come up here. I can move the capsule. So you see that I do have these, these handles to move the, the capsule. Oop, and my selection is very tricky. So I might have to click on it. There we go. So on the outer side, this is the way it's kind of working. So you saw that that was kind of tricky there. Um, I could take the handle here and pull it away and have maybe the shoulder, because I have the shoulder joint selected, affecting only the outer part of the arm like that and so on and so forth. But I can move it in the Z axis, the X axis, and usually the Y axis as well. It might just be hard to see. And there we go. Look, there's one right there. So this was the Y axis that I was moving it on. Here's the X axis. So the X axis is actually aligning with my joint. Okay. So I could pull it up and down like that. And that's a good starting point. I could actually pull it down and say, okay, well, the shoulder, I want to kind of incorporate all of that right there. Okay. And you're noticing that I get quite a hot spot right here on the, the lateral part of his body. And what I can do is just kind of take this and all of these color codings mean a uh, different thing. So for instance, I could click on the top of the capsule here, any part of the green and drag it. And I could, you know, kind of bring that down a bit. And I can also do this. I can take the, the red part here, click and drag it, and it will make the capsule smaller. And really what you're doing is you're just fitting your character. There's, there's not much more I can really say when it comes to that is you're fitting the capsule to what influence you want the character to, to be based off of the, the color coding down here, okay, in your settings. The blue handles are pretty cool because they allow you to kind of squeeze this thing in. So I can really get it kind of like that. And I can take it in this way because the red is really encompassing all of that, which looks pretty good except for right here. So, you know, I will have to pull that out a bit. Because really my, my main part is the shoulder. And you see the bottom part here is really going too far. I do not need this to, to really affect all the way past my elbow. So I will take this capsule and pull it up. And, you know, my elbow might affect part of my bicep. So I can, I can do something like this really easily. And then I can kind of drag that down. Or, you know, kind of bring it out this way. And again, it's just going to be a thing that you're going to have to play with this tool to get it to work for you the best way that you possibly can. Okay. Something like this uh, is okay for me. I mean, I would just go paint the weights and kind of make peace with that. But, you know, really, a lot of the times I don't like to spend too much time on one thing. And I wouldn't really worry about getting things too perfect to begin with. Play with this thing and, and don't worry about, about getting it perfect uh, off the first time you're trying it. Play with it to, to get comfortable with the tool and that's just gonna get you faster at the tool. It's also going to allow you to see that there's other options and things that you can work with for this to work for you, basically. So, again, kind of put that aside, trying to get things to work perfectly the first time, okay? But you can move this around. You can rotate this. You see the, the outer parts here are my rotate tool. So I can rotate this to be maybe a little more like this. Okay, and now I can take that blue handle and click and... I deselected it, so I'll just click on the joint again. That brings it right back. I'll click the blue handle and drag it inward. Okay, and that might be something that helps me. It might not, you know. You're going to have to play with it. Each character is going to be different, so there's really going to be no set rule or set way of working other than, you know, you're just going to have to mess with these things until they start to work for you. But basically, you would do that for each one of these, and, and this one's not too great. I wouldn't be really happy with this one, but... You know, I could go and keep rotating it as I see fit based off my camera angle. You know, different orthographic views are very helpful. So, you know, just kind of kind of work with what you what you have. And don't forget about some of the other things. So use those orthographic views. Pop out of here. Hold down Shift, hit F. That'll frame it in all of your, your windows. So you can see what's going on here, here, and here, and here. Also, don't forget about your professional mode. Professional mode is holding down control or command on the um, the Apple computer. And sometimes if, if command shift, or sorry, if command spacebar doesn't work, then it's gonna be control spacebar because Apple kind of kept some of their hotkeys from PC on in Maya, which is kind of strange. But um, you do have a control key, so it's not, it's not the worst thing in the world. So hold down control, spacebar, that'll pop you into a professional mode, which is really just a full screen mode, kind of hides all your other stuff. 
All right, and um, it really kind of saves your eyes though. So make sure that you are able to use that to pop back out of there. Hold down Control, Spacebar, or Command Spacebar, and that'll bring you back. Okay. I'll click off of this and, and say that uh, I'm not really completely happy with that, but I'm not too worried. I need to move on to show you that you could jump to this guy now. And you're seeing that I'll pop in here with my space bar. It's not looking too beautiful. So, you know, I'll kind of increase this part here, increase this part here. And that's looking better already. And I know that my roll bone is going to affect it up to a certain point. So I'll kind of just let it come up to there-ish. Maybe take this one out, you know, this handle. And then I'll see what my roll bones do. And, and when I move the influence of one, so if I bring this one, if I can get to my arrows here, just kind of zoom in here, try to click on the arrow, and it is kind of finicky. So with some of the ways that you're moving these. But let me try this. If you guys use your plus and minus keys, that'll make the tool larger or smaller. And I might have to change my camera angle just to get to that arrow right there. There we go. So I can move that and uh, move this arrow, click it once to activate it, and then click it the next time and drag to move it. Which is, it works, but you know, you might not be too used to that just because our other tools kind of just kind of work for us. So again, all I'm doing is clicking and, and dragging my options here. And I know that between here and here, this joint and uh, the roll bone, they have to have some kind of blend, so I'll just kind of pull this one back a bit. And then between the wrist and the roll bone, same thing. So pull the end caps of this thing back. And then I can always enlarge them, pull them down, all that good stuff. And then you'll see that my blue handles have kind of shrunk a bit. I'm not too worried about that because I could still access them, which is great. So I have that, and all the parts that I need are kind of encompassed in red. So this is pretty good. Okay, I'll hit the minus key to kind of bring my tool down, my rotation tool, my move tool and such. And that's looking pretty good. And basically all you do is that for every part. So you click away out here where there's nothing and deselect what you were working on. And then you can click on something else like the thumb here. If I was going to work on the thumb, I'll click on that joint, click off here to deselect it, click on this joint to work with it. And basically that's all that you're doing. You're getting it to fit. In this case, it's working on both sides, or you could mirror the joints over. And then uh, based off of my skinning tutorials and such, you can still do the same skinning. You can do the component mode when you're working with the, the weighted vertices on here. So you still have all the other options. It's just a different way of, of skinning, and you're kind of more saying how much weight you know you want on each part of the body and vertices to, um, to be affected. So again, these really are, if I right click and I go to vertex mode, they're affecting all the vertices in a certain area. So any skinning is really just affecting your vertices. You're just telling it which section, if you will, of vertices to affect based off of which joint you want them to follow. Okay. So there we go. I hopeful, I'm hopefully this is helpful to you guys and, uh, click on the different parts and, and try them out. If you guys have any questions, feel free to get a hold of me. And that's pretty good. So again, this is for my class. Uh, anybody else that kind of stumbles upon this, um, I may not check my comments and stuff so much. And uh, my explanations, again, are a little bit more vast than what you need. It's not just like the quick and dirty on this because my students need to know exactly what is going on and how to modify this stuff. Okay, so I expect them to be professionals, not just a uh, click and drag type of deal. And follow this but not really know what you're doing so hopefully this is helpful and I'm going to go ahead and stop this tutorial